He's a man too. Sometimes they make mistakes. We all do. We're men. Sometimes they screw up. Sometimes they just have a bad day and didn't like you. Didn't like the way you look. Didn't like the way you talk. Maybe they were politically motivated. Maybe they were racially biased. You don't know. <clears throat> Maybe there were none of those things. And they just screwed up. You get the opportunity to examine the order and see if there's something that's void. If he violated his oath of office and deprived you of due process or your rights, it's a void order. All you got to write is notice a void order and go file a court. And here's one. Then he's got to figure it out. Then he's got to rewrite it. But most people think a judge's order is final. It's final after 30 days. Understand that. It's a major area where we screw up. It's not your fault. Nobody knows. I mean, what classes did you have kindergarten through 12th grade? Absolutely. Some do, some don't. It's not there. It's your responsibility to know the law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, as they say. Right? I say that same thing to police all the time at the window. I set them up at the window. And they fail a lot. And when they fail, I make money. It's not their fault. They want the same kindergarten through 12th grade I did. It's called a public school system. They weren't the same thing. Then they went through a little bit of how to be a cop. I know, I went through the same training. You know what I learned? Not a whole hell of a lot. Now that I know the law. I thought I knew a lot. All right, let's go have some, finish this, this hat. This, this jurisdiction of the water. It's just administrative. If you can, stay out of the water. There are sharks. Have you heard me say that before? You cried it loud and almost before it came out of my mouth. Stay out of the water, there are sharks. The land's a good place to be as long as you know your rights and have your superior titles. It's a great place to be. We could be fairly successful there. The water's a lot harder to be successful. Unless you remember, it's all about contracts. It's all about breach of contract. It's all about whether a contract exists or not. It's all about knowing the elements of a contract. It's all about knowing if there's privity of contract. All those little things, you can destroy most contracts. Especially the one-sided contracts police officers give you. They're all one-sided contracts. They have to have the other side, which is your consent on something before. You fix the things you did before, and then when the police stop you, it's a one-sided contract, it's easy to get out. See? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Where you want to stay is that top jurisdiction if you can. Well, that's where you're the king. That's where you're God line. That's where you're a fiduciary. When you are a good fiduciary, good steward, for the benefit of a beneficiary, then you're above the law. Because it's simple. It's simple. Wouldn't you like to be somewhere where it's simple? Yes. That's above most things? And where you can settle the matter quickly and easily and calmly with a smile on your face with respect and no fear. Where you can walk into the judge's chambers and settle the matter. Because all you do is how you prepare your paperwork is how you go in in equity. Equity law is beautiful. Trust law is equity. 
when you go in in equity, well, then it's just a fiduciary matter, a trust matter before the court, and that's easy to settle because it's expressed already. You see what I mean? That's where you want to stay if you can stay there. Okay. You're going to like some of these. <clears throat> I'll start with the bank ones. The checkbook money they tender to the borrower has an equal value of legal tender because its promissory note will be sold for legal tender cash. So read it again. The checkbook money they tender to the borrower has an equal value of legal tender because his promissory note will be sold for legal tender cash. Almost never on a mortgage does the bank have the promissory note. Have you ever demand that they produce the promissory note in the court of law? It's a great way to prove a crime. If they don't have a promissory note in hand, they can't tie it to the money they lent. And then you can just bring up banking law and say, well, the bank can't get the money out of their shareholders' accounts and they can't get it out of their depositors' accounts because that's illegal. So where'd they get the money? Your Honor, was it my signature that created the money? They gave them the money to pay off my house that I bought? And if it was paid off in escrow at closing time, and they took a management fee because they take two or three points on the mortgage, then why am I making them payments for 30 years? That's a very expensive management fee, wouldn't you think? In order for me to pay them payments for a management fee for 30 years, they must have a promissory note or a promise to pay. Your Honor, I need them to provide a promissory note to me. They can't do it. Do you understand I just beat the hell out of them in court right here with those short words? It took me a long time to learn those words and be able to rattle them off just like that. But in that little bit of time, I kicked their butt. Now the bank's got the burden of proof that they have a promissory note or not. They sold it a long time ago. They used my signature on the promissory note to trade it on Wall Street. To hypothecate it and trade it over and over. And the bank has made seven to ten times the amount of the mortgage. And so you know what that is? Usury and fraud. You got them. Boom, done, over. That simple. All right. The bank uses the newly created checkbook money to fund the bank loan check they give to the alleged borrower to be repaid to them at interest over time. Isn't that cool? Now, I already mentioned Administrative Procedures Act Section 6 when it comes to you don't need to borrow attorney in court. Their own Administrative Procedures Act Section 6 says you have the right to have any counsel of your choosing regardless of his bar membership. She could quote it exactly. I paraphrased and made it simple. Go ahead. In Administrative Procedures Act Section 6, it says um, they can neither grant nor deny the right to anyone who's not an attorney the right to represent another in any administrative hearing. That was word for word, guys. They cannot grant nor deny to you the right to represent another. Uh, even though you're not a bar card holder. I turned it around and made it simple and used the other way. But same, same thing. All right. So here's another one. So here's some case law, some opine 
Schwarz versus Board of Examiners. The practice of law cannot be licensed by a state or a state. I had a, I had a, uh, I was helping a friend of mine in court, and I had the judge say, "Do you have a bar license?" I said, no, Your Honor, I have the same license you do. <laughs> and he says, are you, are you a judge? I said, no. So you're an attorney? I said, no. I never be a member of that club. He says, what do you mean you got the same license I do? I said, I have the right to practice the law. It's open to all people. <clears throat> I said, the difference is if you have a bar license, you can only practice. I don't have a license, so I can perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. There's a difference, but that's what the doctor's practice and the attorney's practice. And this practice, they never can perfect. They can't do it. Only we the people can perfect law. I understand that. Short versus the Board of Examiners. The price of the law. Can it be licensed by a state or a state? Well, I got news for him also. No attorney has a license by a state. Show me their state business license. Show me a state issued law license. Only the labor union called the bar can provide an attorney with a license. A state can't provide an attorney with a license. They don't even have such a license. They're licensed by the bar. What is the bar? The British Accreditation Registry. They're foreign. Foreign does. It's part of the crown. The soldiers of the bankers. Not part of the United States of America, even though they were born maybe in my next door neighbor's house. When they joined the bar, they joined a foreign legion. That's a good way to say it. Okay? Sims versus Ahern's, the practice of law is an occupation of common right. For most of the judges' face. There, Your Honor, do you really like case law? Is that what you go by? Because I see all lawyers' documents are full of case law. Is that what you go by here? He, he knows you're up to something. I guarantee it. He says, well, yeah, sometimes. That's what they will say. I've had them say that to you. Well, yeah, sometimes. I said, well, since you go by old case law, I do not know I will not allow it to be used against me because I know it's simply opinion. Here, let me give you some case law. The practice of the law can be licensed by a state or a state, short of versus board of examiners. The practice of the law is an occupation of common rights, Sims versus Abrams. Throw them there, they throw them. The Administrative Procedures Act, yeah. These guys get angry when you do that. It's okay. We're not there to make friends with them always, although I usually do. If I can them over my side of the honey, it's better than piss them off. But sometimes it's fun just to piss them off. Yeah, yeah it is. The problem is, temporarily being thrown into custody for you know, a few hours. They always let you go by the end of the day. You turn the group. A promissory note is a negotiable instrument constructed in strict accordance with the Uniform Commercial Code. Debt is discharged upon tender of a promissory note, whether accepted or rejected by the payee. A payment tendered and refused is paid in full, meaning discharge. Nobody has an obligation to pay in Federal Reserve promissory notes. Isn't that interesting? Now that's such a real thing. The definition of a person. Got to love this. 
I'm going to use the IRS code 26 USC section 6671B and 26 USC section 7343. Now let's have a little more fun before I read this. Title 26 of the United States Code is the IRS Code codified. Codified, because the IRS Code is just a whole bunch of books. In fact, I can remember when there were 72 of them, and now there's about 84 of them. And they just keep expanding their book collection. But they have to be codified. Right? So, 